My name is Heather Smythe and I'm from the Queensland Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation. I'm a sensory scientist and flavour chemist and I study what makes food delicious. So beef is really well known for its tenderness, uh, but the reality is modern beef, most beef in Australia, certainly meets a minimum tenderness quality. And so beef that has been tough in the past has certainly been moved out of the system. And most of the beef that we have in Australia meets that minimum quality standard in terms of tenderness. So. What next? What next for Australian beef? We have a number of premium brands in Australia that want to differentiate themselves from one another. Flavour really is the answer. Understanding the aroma and flavour qualities of those beef um, really has the ability to, to set them apart, to distinguish them from one another. But the flavour in beef comes from a number of different different sources. It could be due to genetics, it could be due to the management of the animal, the environment and certainly the diet um, that the animal has been fed, as well as things like you know the age of the animal uh, and also the, the sex of the animal as well can impact flavours. But we really don't know, as, as scientists, as, as flavour chemists, we don't really understand what are the, the compounds that cause those differences in flavour, um, let alone describing the actual sensory nuance that they might create. Consumers are really interested in understanding um, premium products. When you're paying a lot of money um, for a product, just like a wine, you want to be able to connect with those sensory descriptions that describe the, the, the sensory enjoyment that you're having um, from that particular product. And consumers need words to be able to convey that message. Um, people who are selling beef, people who are marketing beef, restaurants also need those terms to be able to describe um, why this particular steak might be a better choice for a consumer than another piece of steak. Maybe this one has more gamey um, types of attributes, whereas this one is more caramelised notes. Um, and that may also suit what dish that it's served with or what, what sauce or accompaniment comes with that. Consumers really do want that sophistication when they're paying for high quality, premium quality products. So this really is a chance for Australia to lead the way. We produce such high quality beef products in Australia. Um, it's very expensive to make high quality beef. And Australia is known, is synonymous with being clean and green and other markets are desperate for our product. Uh, so to be able to set ourselves apart in that premium space, being able to describe the unique flavour qualities that we're able to offer from our unique environments, from our unique genetics, and the unique way that we even um, manage our animals and treat the beef post-harvest. We need to be able to describe that flavour difference and communicate that to our customers around the world in a way that, that no one else is doing. This really would be new for Australia and Australian beef. After describing those qualities, we really want to be able to put chemical signatures behind them. So from a flavour chemist perspective, what is it, what are the volatiles, what are the components in the product that actually create those delicious aromas that we're interested in? What's creating the bread crust, the roasted notes, the caramelised flavours, the gaminess? What are those compounds that are that creating those flavours? And then of course, where where are those flavours being generated? Is it through diet? Is it through genetics? Is it through environment? If we can make those connections, we're able to deliver a consistent sensory quality and also protect those brands um, from being copied by, by anybody else because we're tying back the quality, the sensory descriptions of their beef through the compounds that are there that are coming from the unique um, set of management practices that deliver that flavour in the first place.